shit. So let's go. Yeah, man. What up, everyone? I'm Bob Von Dane. That's my brother, Mr. Get That Work. We the change yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't really much going on, so just decided to come on live and talk some shit with y'all. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are, there are some things coming soon. Uh, we got, uh, I'm not sure if you knew, but we got Riddick Bow and Lamar Odom in a celebrity boxing. We, Hell no, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, we got Holy Holy Marginani trying to get his revenge with the, how do you, how you like your cut, G? When he got slapped. Yeah, he's fighting uh, Corey B. So it, there's some things happening. You know, I got to get, you know, I like Paul. Mm-hmm. I like Paulie because Paulie has the most brittle hands, I think, in the history of life. Like, if you ever saw the movie Mr. Glass, that yeah. character, that's what he has in his hands. He has that disease in his hands. But yeah. with being said, though, you got to love Paulie because he's super tough. He fought everyone there was to fight. He won a world championship. So even though he didn't have power, you can't blame the man for having fucked up hands. He had heart. I love Paulie, man. You know, I wasn't a, a, a huge fan of his boxing style, but you got to give him respect for what he did in, in the yeah. boxing world, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, he seemed like the type that really never ran from anybody, no matter if, you know, it wasn't looking good for him. So, yeah, I definitely give him credit. But whenever I think about Paulie, the very first thing that comes to mind is when he's like screaming in the microphone. He's just like, don't talk about my side piece. Don't talk about don't talk about my side piece. That's just my side piece. That's the first thing that comes to mind. I don't know why. That's just the first thing that comes to my mind. Every time I Yo, they they rules of engagement, man. No (laughs) children, man. And definitely no side pieces. Come on. Yeah, yeah. You can't you can't go on about that. On camera, you know. Yeah, you can't. You can't. He was married at the time or what? But yeah, man, you can't bring up the <laughs> show. Oh uh, man, man. yo, how was your weekend, man? It was. It was all right, man. Uh, family uh, just left. Uh, she said she was uh, on an airplane with an old famous rapper, and so I'm, I'm like. I'm like, all right, cool. I was just like, so I'm going down the list. I'm texting her. I'm like, nah, it's a method man. I'm trying to think of everybody from New York. And before I could even type it, she shows me a picture of uh, Ja Rule. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's Ja. I was like, yo, start, uh, start rapping a 50 Cent song. And she was just like, no. No, I, uh, I, know, what that, I don't even know what that is. She's like. <laughs> yo, yo, did you watch the verses with him and Fat Joe? No, I've, I've heard about it, but I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. Uh, so I'm probably going to lose whatever cool points I've even had. And sure okay. I don't have any, but I'm a Ja Rule fan. And it was before the verses. I've always been a Ja Rule fan. Okay. I mean, that's fine. Nah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I like to sing and rap, but I also think Ja could also rap rap. You know, he's not just the singing rapper. Like yeah. back in high school, around the time DMX came out, was a little uh, um, Ja Rule followed up too. And I remember someone putting me on to his first album. Okay. And they, yeah, Ja Rule, I'm like, who? The guy who's trying to sound like X, you know, fake DMX. And he lent me the album. And from that point on, I became a fan. And I always thought he was dope. So when I heard the verses, not gonna lie, man, I kind of wish he would have went at it with 50. I wish that would have been the verses. That can't that can happen. G unit. Nah, that would have been fine. Yeah, that can't happen. It's not gonna happen ever. I'm pretty sure of it. It's a lot of history between them street beef and stuff like that, but right. You know, I, I fuck with Ja Ru, man. I, I like I love his music and I like I liked a lot of the stuff he did after. 50 made it uncool. Uncool to like him. Right. Remember years ago, was, I think the, I forgot what album it was. It dropped right after 50 was going in on it. And I was on the bus listening to it. I called my man up like, yo, this album is fire. Like, Jaws going in. And you know, people on the bus made fun of me. <laughs> Yo, there's a couple dudes like, yo, you listening to Ja Rule? And I'm like, yo, he's <laughs> making fun of me. Yo. I can't believe 
women's shit. Yeah, yeah. It's weird though. Fifty made it corny to like Ja Rule, but Ja Rule was dope. No facts. Yeah, he he definitely he had a a pretty good flow. Uh, I think he's a little underrated with his flow, and he had decent bars. Uh, he was definitely on point back then. He he was on a hot streak. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, he fizzled out. Uh, I'm not really sure why he fizzled out. I can't really say. It was just the, the whole fifty shit. Fifty made it. Fifty made it corny to listen to Ja Rule. But then took his whole style and kind of did the same thing, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I can't really speak too much on it just because I wasn't big on Ja Rule and I wasn't too big on 50. So, you know, with that being said, I, I can't really pinpoint how, how that happened. But, yeah, I just know they got beef until – until you know the ends of the earth, it don't matter where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching the verses though, it kind of made me get like this nostalgic feeling. Mm. Know, I don't know, man. You know, you getting old when you watch it and you feel good because it takes you back to those younger days. Also, like watch the documentary on Ali. That's right. Everything there is to know about Ali, I done read books and watch documentaries. I also got bad memories, so I forget. But I'm watching this doc, and it's an old doc, but it just makes me feel good, man. You know you're getting old when you look at shit and you just start going back to your childhood and reliving those younger days, man. No, I know exactly what you mean. I think the other weekend I had woke up one Saturday and I had deja vu because it felt like a Saturday when you would wake up when you're younger and you can't wait to go watch the Saturday morning cartoons. cartoons and I had yeah, that for man. a split second. I was like, oh, shit. I was, it felt good. It felt yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, it went away, but I was like, I felt it. I was just like, oh, wow. And I haven't had that feeling in a long time, so I, I understand. Yeah, I, my, my, my wife does that where I like to watch relaxing music to put me at peace. Mm -hmm. she puts on cartoons and it's funny when I wake up and I, I see it I'm like it does bring you back to that deja vu nostalgic yeah middle school feeling ah man yeah 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 that, that's dope man I like that yo uh back to boxing though uh some guy you know I know you like you went way off the rails You're damn right there was no segue into that shit I didn't even try <laughs> I Not you all know how we got into <laughs> my cartoons and Ja Rule, but yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but I wanted to ask you, what do you think about this fight happening? I know we touched on it before, but you got Joshua and Yusuke coming up. How do you really see that fight going? Has your opinion changed or you still think it's Not AJ? Either, man, I think this is probably going to be one of the most boring fights. I don't, don't really look at Yusuk as a, a heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Skill fighter, you know, most cruiserweights should have more technical boxing skills than most heavyweights. But to me, he's just a cruiserweight. I think uh, his movement may give um, AJ trouble. But just the sheer size, the jab, it's going to be a boring fight. But I could see uh, I could see AJ winning this and it just being a boring fight. I'm not really looking too forward to this one. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to watch it. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, the fact that you said cruiserweight, I just want to also bring up, there's a new weight class, well, fairly new. I'm pretty sure most people don't know, but Bridgerweight. And What's that? Bridgerweight is from 200 to 224. Oh, Jesus Christ. What are they saying? Yo. Yeah. Yeah. So... I say that because you said about you feel like he's mostly cruiserweight. Do you think he doesn't – you don't feel like he's a full-fledged heavyweight even though he fought two or three times at heavyweight? Uh, you feel like he would have been better going to this new weight instead of jumping to heavyweight? I mean, you got to jump to heavyweight. I don't even know why they got this this bridge of weight, whatever you're talking about. I didn't even know about that shit, man, which is crazy. Mm. Do you think that that's just a money grab to have another division to have – what four more titles or whatever come out like, so like well i honestly 
it, it's hard to say because you know i guess once you pass 200 they yeah. consider you heavyweight right back then yeah. right so maybe you know when you have somebody who's coming in who's like deontay wilder who's like 215 but then you have you know like a tyson ferry who's coming in like you know 240 or 250 maybe they feel like that's a mismatch uh in size and weight and i could understand that but i don't know i think 200 and more i think you know i think you deserve to be a heavyweight i'm not sure if i hate this i can't i don't want to say that yet i gotta see a little more i gotta see more from it you know i i definitely hate it i don't like it mm. like I, I feel like what you could have done rather than add a weight division add more weight to cruiserweight Cruiserweight, rather than I think it's what uh, 190 or 200, right? Make it like 205, 210, 208, somewhere there. Mm -hmm. Once you get over that weight, to me, I feel like as long as you're naturally over 200 pounds, naturally, not putting on muscle and weight. Like right now, I'm 200. Right. That's obese. Actually, I should not be 200. It's no, nah, it is. It is. You know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm on some pole boy shit right now, you know, <laughs> Michelin man looking, and, you yeah. know, I had an injury, so I haven't been able to work out or do anything. I'm, I'm in pain. So to me, if it doesn't make sense, if you're naturally a 200 pound guy, you carry enough body weight and strength to knock a person out, whether they're 210 250 to 300. Once you're over 200 pounds, you have enough natural body weight to knock someone out. Don't matter if a guy, if a guy's 300 pounds, man. Don't. Uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say it, it wouldn't matter because you can be a small heavyweight and you can be a, a big heavyweight. Just I think that that goes for any weight class. You could be a big welterweight. You could be a small welterweight. Um, I think his body frame and body mass. I mean, look at this guy back in the day. I believe his name was Michael Grant. Uh, I think he was, six, big. he was like six, eight. So yeah, he was oh, big for like nothing. That. But, you know, uh, some heavyweights that went against them, they they were con they were small heavyweights. Yeah. Realistically, yeah. they yeah. were well, 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 you can see it. It was visible. True. So but, that's what I'm you, saying. Let me hear your point. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if I hate this Bridger weight yet. I think I need to see more. I see. Do you what you're remember saying. my my fault to cut you off because now I don't want to lose my train of thought. Do you remember Michael Grant fighting? Yeah, I know. I, I know. I, I needed to say I'm it anyway. Sure, I know. That was a huge. That was an awful name to bring up. I know. <laughs> I know. No. Nah. Blue. If you just blew on his chin, he went down. If you just blew on his chin, he went down. That's what I mean. After 200 pounds, if you naturally, some guys aren't naturally 200 pounds. They're smaller guys that move up. Holyfield right. was actually a smaller guy. And that was, if, if anyone remembers back in the days when Holyfield was coming up, that was the criticism against Holyfield, that he wasn't yeah. a function. Right. Well, this is the real deal. Not the real deal that just fought on Triller. We're talking about the guy that went to war with Riddick Cole. They right. used to say he wasn't strong enough. But if you naturally over 200 pounds, come on, man, let them fight, man. Let them fight. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard, man. You guys. I mean, uh, there are some freaks of nature, man. They There's are. Some, but, but there but are then, some freaks you of remember nature. they used to have um, the super heavyweight division. Right. Which was kind of like a freakish thing. I'm not even sure if they still have that. They used to go they, four or eight rounds or something like that. They should. I mean, if you got this guy from Game of Thrones who's now a boxer, they, they probably should be a super heavyweight division because you got guys like him. Which I agree, but then leave that. Rather than make the bridge division, why not just make the super heavyweight division and make it that its own thing, its own category, where as long as you're over 200 pounds, you can compete against anyone over 500 or something of that nature. And right. then maybe, maybe if you really want to do it, why don't you cap the heavyweight division? Yeah. You can't be, I want to say maybe 250, 260. 
that's a let me tell you this if you cap the heavyweight division and you have a super heavyweight division that division is dead that's a slow division that's a dead division what the heavyweight no the super heavyweight oh no the super, the super heavyweight division is a, is a dead division bro it, 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 it is, but I definitely think you don't want to add the bridge of it. I, it's just stupid. It's just stupid. Mm-hmm. No one even really likes cruiserweights. That's like the, the mid weird land for people. Right. Know? All right. I mean, I, I see what you're saying. I don't, I don't completely hate it. You do see what you're saying. I think that would have been a better idea if they would have extended the maximum weight on cruiserweight, I think that would have been a better solution. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Or, or if you want, cap the heavyweight division. Right. Make it two fifty, and then if they can't come in at that level, well, then now you go up to the super heavyweight, where you know there's hardly anybody there. Yeah, but you make you, you, boxing needs to do certain things, man. They need to almost adopt that MMA trilla. The, the, the more entertainment aspect of things right now, everyone is so scared to fight each other and trying to get the bag. If they just make boxing slightly more entertaining and adopt the MMA on a mantra, maybe a little more money would be made to go around. Well, I'm not sure if more money would be made, but I definitely know there'll be more satisfied fans. I know that for a fact, uh, if they do that. And that kind of leads me to something else. I seen something on Twitter where somebody had mentioned that he's, I guess, pro Dana White. And they said that money is what is what ruined the sport of boxing and greed of from the fighters. And the way Dana White runs his organization is better. Do you agree? uh, Do you agree with that? Because on one hand, I I can see what this guy is saying. On the other hand, I feel like his fighters should get paid more. They should compensate it more. Mm. What do you think? Doesn't doesn't Dana White almost remind you of like Jimmy Hoffa and the Union? Get down and lay down. But he does take care of the, the the majority, the whole union I'm taking care of. But what happens with those selected few that are the outliers? Mm. Premier, spectacular superstars. They don't really get taken care of like they do in boxing. And it's weird. It, it, in my opinion, they're both the exact same thing, but on the, the other end of the spectrum. So boxing's all the way to the left. MMA is all the way to the right, the way Dana White, Dana White runs things. Right. It has to be some kind of a middle ground. It has to. You know, if they could just, if boxing could adopt somewhat of what MMA does, it would leave more money to go around rather than Jake Paul making, what, $30 million. Meanwhile, some of the top 10 Fighters are only making, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Let me ask you this question. Do you think money corrupted boxing or do you think money corrupted boxers and the boxers corrupted boxing? Where would you put the blame on boxing in general with the promoters and yes. everything like that? Or would you put the blame with the actual boxers? 100% with the promoters, 100%. I think right now we're starting to get a little more exposed on how corrupt and how much people are getting fucked. It's almost like the music business where people are starting to see, damn, I was getting jerked all this time. I got this this super raw end of the deal. If people did their research, they'll realize how many of their favorite fighters weren't broke, but weren't super rich. And we're right. talking about superstar fighters. Ali had to fight to the end of his career. Now, Ali wasn't broke, but you're talking about one of the first fighters to make million dollar purses. 
multi-million dollar purses. Right. Well, he probably he probably did it because of something inside of him, but also money did play a huge part of it. And money did play a huge part in there for a lot of fighters, man. And these promoters, management, they took advantage. <laughs> it, it's hard to say, man. And because it's a cash 22 is because I want to see these fighters get paid. I want to see everybody yeah, get definitely. paid. If, if you're going in there and you're basically generating all the funds for your company or whatever, you should get compensated. Yeah. But then again, you know, now this is like, they feel like I, I, I need to make that money or I'm not fighting this dude. or I'm not doing that. So it's hard. To, it's hard to call it, man. I want these guys to get paid, but I'm, I'm still a fan and I want to see these fights. But do I understand that these people want to get paid? Sure. I mean, you you had the era of Don King. After that, you know, everybody wants to get paid. Everybody wants to make sure they get paid, and they don't want to fight unless they get paid. See, but even even before Don King, this shit has been going on for years. Yeah, yeah. Years of people getting jerked. One of the pioneers of of this whole business mentality. Everyone likes to point out Floyd. This shit has been going on since the days of black and white uh, boxing. Right. Ray Robinson was one of the first ones to be on it. On it, on it. Y'all want to, right. y'all, y'all, y'all doing TV deals? I want to get paid for that. Or I'm not in the night of the fight. Like, nah, I'm not fighting. If y'all not paying me an extra, whatever the purse was, an extra whatever, a couple thousand. I, I don't really remember the details too much. Mm-hmm. But- this shit has been going on for so long where you could go back to, uh, I believe it was like Joe Lewis. In order for Joe Lewis to, to, to fight for the heavyweight title, he had to give the Cinderella man a fight. And I, it, it like, you know, my mind may, may be a little fuzzy on this. The management, in order to make the fight, gave, the Cinderella man, James James Brad, Braddock, or whatever his name is, the next 10 purses or some outrageous number of yeah. Lewis's fight. Yeah. The management would do that. Insane. You yeah. basically got this heavyweight champion fighting almost for free or for another fighter. <laughs> yes, this shit has been going on for an ageless amount of time. Right. So to bring it back to your question with the Dana White thing, Dana White is super for the the betterment of the sport. Not necessarily those certain star, you know, the John Jones, the Conor McGregor's. Um, Man, the Nunes. Yeah. Yeah. That transcend the sport. Yeah. I kind of wish he would lean a little more towards the, the boxing thing. Maybe boxing start leaning more towards the MMA thing. One thing I will say is that while I don't like uh, Jake Paul and the whole celebrity boxing thing, mm-hmm. almost given a, a lesson to all these young fighters on branding, you know, right. build your brand and things like that. I just feel like it's getting a little too much where certain guys won't even fight each other because of, Everyone claiming, hey, hey, who have you fought? Yeah. That always was like leverage for like, I'm trying to get the better of the deal rather than, you know, I actually want to fight you or anything like that. Mm -hmm. A little little crazy, man. I thought I went on a whole history. I mean, (laughs) nah, you're right, though. You know what I'm saying? You're right. Uh, You you brought up a lot of good points and it's a complicated uh, issue with a complicated solution. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel you on everything that you said, man. It, it's hard and it, they got to somehow meet in the middle because, again, as a fan, I want to see these fights. But then as a man, I do understand these people need to get paid. They need to get compensated yeah. correctly. So I get it, man. It's also, uh, you know, this new modern day attitude of boxing kind of pushed me. It, it's been a while. I felt out of love with boxing. And she mm-hmm. started to get back into it now. A lot of people think boxing is whatever they see on TV. And 
boxing starts from in the trenches, like the amateurs and going to those shows and seeing a guy on his rise and all those things. But I became more of a casual fan because I fell out of love with the sport, the sport and the way it handles everything. It's right. Started to gravitate more to MMA because of the way they handle things and the way they deliver their fights. So right now I could see a lot more people, at least the hardcore fans, starting to kind of fall off because of that. Or maybe I may just be the, the rarity because now I, I consider myself a casual while I used to love, love this sport and I would watch a fight over like seven times, analyze it. In. I'm no longer that person. I kind of, I don't even keep up with the media, even though I, I guess I'm considered the fucking media. To some degree, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I would you know, you- I, I wouldn't call you a casual. That, that's definitely not the term I would use. And I think the term casual in the boxing community is just basically not being knowledgeable. Uh, probably being very biased and hmm. knowledgeable. So I wouldn't say that about you. Um, so with that being said, let me ask you this, because I already know you told me, Joshua, you sick, you don't care for that. But, you know, in the future, we have Tyson Fury, Wilder 3. We oh, have yeah. Sean Porter and Terrence Crawford. That's and we fire. have, yeah, and we have Lopez and Cabosa. Now, I just want to ask you, which fight are you most interested to see? Interested or which one do I think is going to be the best? Nah, which one you want to see? Which one you most interested in? I'm I'm interested in seeing the the Fury and Wilder. I don't think okay. it's the best fight. I think the best fight is gonna be hands down Crawford and Porter. Oh yeah, I just think it's gonna be <laughs> fireworks, man. And I, I I'm gonna keep saying it, man. I got Porter knockout. That that is. I got Porter knockout. Wow. Late knockout. Wow. Yeah, man. You might have to go to bar stool, put some money up, man. You might, you uh, might, uh, you might make some bread, man. You might make some bread with uh, that one. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just say this: if you're looking at a guy's technique and skill, Terrence is the man, right? But Terrence is also exciting for the fact that he goes after it. Yeah, mm. try to be too technical where he takes the risk out the fight. He goes for it himself. And leaves him vulnerable where he gets caught with some shots. Yes. So I'm saying, if Sean Porter got, and I do think he's got a lot left in the tank. Right. Calling it hit, knockout. Wow. Wow. There's not many people who would think that. You know, that uh, a lot of people think it might be the other way around. I think Terrence Crawford is going to win, but I think he's going to get hurt in that fight. Mm, okay. I think he's going to get hurt. So I'm going to stick with that. Now, you said knockout. Late knockout. You mean like 9, 10, 11? Yeah, maybe 10, 11, somewhere around there. 10, 11, 12. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah man. Now, the reason why I got to expand on this, this knockout that you think could happen, is this a lucky shot? Or is this... Nah. Or this is a technique? Or this is a skill like... It's not a lucky shot. You think? Nah, but he, if he catches it on um, the way um, Sean Porter fights, it's not really uh, technical in the sense. I mean, he boxed right. well against um, Adrian Broner, but for the most part, it's usually like a like a a mauling pit bull type style. Right. Right. That's what I'm betting. He could maul this guy. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. All right. All right. I mean, you know, we're not going to see out of eye, but we'll see. Uh, I guess over to Fury and Wilder. How do you see that playing out? Oh, man. Yeah. We see in the videos with uh, <laughs> with your boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see. I'm telling you, he's looking better, man. He looks better. He looks better. Yeah, I'm not. Yo. The one thing I would say is, Wilder got that cannon, man. You always in the fight when you got 
the power you owe right. us. And if if Fury slacking, he's reverting back to the old lifestyle, or maybe he's he's a little too inflated and not really taking himself serious. I could see a Rocky Club of Lane situation where he, he gets him out of there just because he wasn't really on point, man. Right. He might be drinking too much of the Kool-Aid. Okay. Okay. Where are you going with that, though, man? You be I'm, seeing these videos. You know, early on, I told you that <laughs> I was not impressed by uh, the that the I seen. Yeah, I wasn't impressed. <laughs> I wasn't impressed by that, man. I, I you know, Malik Scott is over here almost falling down when he gets it. I was just like, oh, God. I wasn't impressed. But again, he looks like he got better. He looks like he looks sharper. I'm actually going to go with Wilder with a knockout, man. Mm. I'm actually going with Wilder with a knockout. I'm not, I'm not going to lie, man. If, if we actually knew him with there and I could see him in camp and know he's not slacking, mm -hmm. he, I, I would say... Tyson Fury got this easy, but I heard a little, you know, some stuff leaking that, uh, you know, he's kind of reverting back to the same lifestyle. Right. I don't, I don't really know. Like, I'm not, you know, it's not like in the Bronx where I could go just show up to the gym and see him. So, yeah. you know, I don't really know, but. But we'll have to see fight night. But yeah. before that, <laughs> before that, we have finally. If hopefully it happens this time, we have uh Combosas and Lopez. And just so everybody knows that that fight is happening on a Monday night. Don't understand why, but it's a Monday night at eight o'clock, just so everybody knows. Uh, what do you think about that? And how do you think it's gonna go? You know, I'm I'm a huge, you know, New, New York's in my blood, man. So I'm riding with it. Right. Not to dodge your question, but now I got to hit you back with another question, man. Every time they ask him about Lomachenko, mm -hmm. it almost seems like he wants no parts and almost seems like he's dodging Loma. For the rematch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get that. I don't even understand that when the fight was literally a point either way. And Loma looked fucking great his last fight. Right. And Loma's a superstar. Why wouldn't you want to take that back? Because right now he's on top. Are we of a that New way? York show. I'm not being. Yeah. I'm no, I mean, I'm I, also I feel biased you. too, but I got yeah, No, I feel you. How do you feel about that? He's on top of the world right now. So, you know, that's how he feels like that. Uh, Loma is a big risk because, like you said, he looked incredible his last fight. He looked yeah. like I'm, I'm on a revenge path. So with that being said, I think, and I think it goes back to what we first discussed. If he Lopez doesn't get paid enough money, I don't think he risks his, risk that fight. I don't think he's going to risk it. Mm. Why risk the rematch, you know? to lose the belts and drop down in the rankings. I don't think he wants to risk that with Loma because Loma looked, like you said, he looked incredible in his last fight. Yeah, there's money there to be made, but I think he's going to want a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of money, honestly. I wanted you to do it, but demand a rematch regardless of the result. If you win, no rematch. But if you lose, immediate rematch. Look, man, yeah. it's like like we said, is it the money with the the, uh, the boxes or is it money with the promoters? I don't know, but definitely the money is the big part in the decision making here. Definitely the money. And I don't understand what was going on with the Cambosa fight, man. Was ticket sales not happening? COVID or whole? Yeah, it, it was. It was a oh, bunch. Well, the fuck a is bunch shit of like yeah, a bunch of excuses. It was a shit show. A shit show that I even didn't even get started yet. Uh, hopefully it happens now, but yeah. And you remember the face off? Yes. It, it looked I was ready for that, right? Yeah, I was ready for that. I actually think Cobosa is, is going to 
do better than what people expect. I don't think he's mm. going to get washed like that. I honestly don't think he's going to get washed like that. I wouldn't be uh, surprised. Hold on, hold on. Are you going upset? I, I'm i going upset, man. Oh! <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm going upset, man. New York. <laughs> I'm going upset, man. Oh, man, man. Disappointing. You're a Brooklyn boy, man. I, I am, man. And <laughs> I, I love Lopez, man. But I think this dude, I, I think... I think Lopez made it worse by pushing this fight back. I think this guy wants to go in there and prove a point. And if, I mean, he may not win, but I, I guarantee he's going out swinging. Mm. That, that's kind of how I feel about Sean Porter, man. Right. Oh, man. Hopefully all these fucking fights actually happen, man. It was been, it's been a slow couple weeks in the boxing world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. So we just came on here to talk some shit. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. If not, still subscribe. <laughs> you know. Like, share, all that. You know what I'm saying? All that, oh. all that, man. I'm fucking exhausted from going to my son's football game yesterday. Awesome. Yeah, man. They they suffered their first loss. I mean, it's only two games in the season, so they won and one, but. My son didn't really grow up playing sports, so this is his first loss. And if I thought he takes a loss in Fortnite bag, my son was losing it. Losing really? It. Yeah, man, he was going nuts. I was like, man, it's crying all that. And it reminded me back when I played the high school ball and when I experienced the loss myself, but the loss was directly on me. If anyone remembers, I played high school football and I was the smallest kid in the school, only freshman to start on that team. And they had the world's biggest runner back and fullback I formation toss my way every fucking time. It's a wrap for you. Oh my God. It was like a little, you know, rabbit getting trailed over by a bunch of horses, man. So I, you know, I, I could sympathize with my son last night and he was bawling, man. He was crying on the sidelines, experienced his first loss. Yo, your coach didn't tell you that that shit from like uh, kicking and screaming with like Will Farrell. fucking hit him in the clock roll. Like fucking like then he didn't tell you to fucking chop his legs or something. Yo, the, the funny thing was like we only had two coaches. Like we only had the head coach and the offensive line coach. When I made the team, I, I showed up to school the first week, the first day of school, they like, oh, trials is after school. So I showed up and while I played football and watched football, I didn't really know football. I didn't mm. know responsibilities and things like that. They just went, yo, you fast and you can hit. Go out there and play cornerback. <laughs> All right, man, I didn't really know what the fuck to do. So right. while I knew how to hit, it was a little nerve-wracking. Uh, most of the time I didn't make tackles and didn't make plays, but it was a little nerve-wracking to get trampled over some 6'6 guys. And I've never played with equipment before. Most mm-hmm. of the street, I was able to handle myself and play decent. But, right. Man trying to school my son on all the techniques and do shit, but I look like Willa Farrell in that movie, but <laughs> the car lines, you know, you know, I mean, that's a good sign though, man. That's a good sign because that just shows that, you know, he has that competitive nature. He doesn't want to lose. So that that's a good sign. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he took it bad, even though it was a, it was a team effort and a team, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he took it bad. He, you know, he's still looking at the part that he plays. So that's good. He, he's going to come back stronger. I hope so. Yeah. Yo, there was this one kid out there, man. He looked, he ain't look big, but you could visibly see the difference between him and the other kids. Mm-hmm. Straight, straight out of Madden. Make yeah. One-handed interceptions, punch oh. turns. Their kicker sucked. And then they put him back there to kick, and he fucking kicked the shit to the end zone. I was like, "Yeah, this dude is unreal." 
But one, one thing, I, as I've gotten older, I'm able to recognize talent in any sport. You know what I mean? I can just see it with the second team. This kid is legit, man. A lot of times with boxing, too, with anything in life, there are people that are just built different. Right. Just so different. They're not regular fucking human beings. And that's where you get the super outliers, you know, the, the Mike Tysons, the LeBron James, those yeah. just, they're, they're different. But for everyone else, all the kids, especially in football, you know, kind of to my son, the only way to be successful in life is to fucking grind your ass off and study something and live it, breathe it, practice it. And even with that, you still can fail. It may not be in your DNA to be great at something. Right. At the time, I was five, three, a hundred pounds playing high school football. You know what I mean? And it is how I was. Once you get through, you know, you're playing with some kids that are already hit the puberty, got a full beard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know what you mean. <laughs> fucking fullback had a whole family. You know what I mean? Dude, he was fucking six, eight. Where he had a whole career and everything playing fullback in high school. She was amazing, man. I don't know where I was going with any of this. <laughs> no, no, competitiveness. I, I get it. Talent, competitiveness, you know, I, I definitely get it. You know what I'm saying? Some people, like you said, just built for things and some people could see greatness early. And I, I you know, that's definitely something we, we probably got to talk about next episode because I actually wanted to ask you a crazy question. I'm, I'm going to ask it now but we're going to definitely discuss it next time when it comes to greatness uh you know i i actually had something how you know we talked about it before and what i feel like is great and you know the qualities and the factors into being great but then i thought about it some more some people are great in different ways because of different things mm. so when it comes to the comparison that everybody likes to bring everybody likes to talk about which is canelo and mayweather um i feel like canelo is great because of his performances not and then this you know there's other factors too but one of the things that make him great to me is his performances in a fight whether it was a, a great opponent or an average opponent is how he finished the fight when it comes to mayweather i feel like his greatness is his longevity I think that was the greatest thing about him. The fact that he was able to do it for that long and, and you know, do what he do. So I think what everybody did is uh, greatness, you know, uh, with the people who are, we, we consider great, but I think there's certain things that make them that. Like Tyson, his greatness was his incredible power. Incredible power. So, Yo, we, yeah, man. We're we going to do a whole episode on that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's levels where someone's great. And then there's also categories in those levels. Well, this person was a great puncher. This person was a great boxer. This person was uh, a, a great brawler. So that, that would be actually an interesting, dope episode, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like anyone viewing, you know, put in the comments if you want us to discuss anyone. And we'll try to, like, rank them or throw them in there. Oh yeah, yeah, we definitely do that. You know what I'm saying? That's the last episode, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. But yo, uh, I'm about to get out of here, man. Hopefully, uh, the Jets come out there and perform. You know, I'm mm, good luck with that. New York fan. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. So uh, I ride Giants, Jets, Knicks, every everything New York. Only thing is, you know, on my personal podcast, it's been a rough couple of weeks so i didn't do any episodes i didn't want to come on there and i'd rather miss a couple of weeks than give y'all shit on here so right you know i try to bring it every time whenever we on here so you know i haven't done shit for my personal podcast <laughs> i was just too upset get on camera and do the joe buttons and put some ice on my face and start crying. <laughs> yo <laughs> Word up, man. Start wearing a merry hats and shit. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, man, I'm gonna get out of here. Work always good talking with you, bro.
Yes, my brother. Later. Later.